Welcome back. We're looking at the performance of a Windows 2008 server um, by studying the SMB traffic flowing in and out of the server uh, using Wireshark. And uh, we've exported the data from Wireshark now and we're about to analyze the data using Excel. So let's go to the actual exported data and here it is slow smb 2txt now you remember that I said that we should export this as a text file even though it's in CSV format I'll show you why that is because um, if I open it up so I'll start Excel so let's open the file let's find it So here it is, I'm going to double click on that, and this is the reason why I wanted it spec specified as a text file because I get this text import wizard because I have some problems with some of the values in the columns. So I want to leave it as a delimited file, but it's not tab delimited, it's comma delimited because it's a CSV. And now we click on the next button and here's where we have the problem you remember that we have multiple SMB messages in one TCP packet some of the some of the packets contain multiple SMB messages just as these do here now the trouble is that Excel struggles to handle these two particular columns because it tries to read the string as a numeric which means that for all of those digits it tries to treat the whole thing as one number and because it can't handle that number of uh, digits for a numeric it rounds the figure as well which makes things even worse so we need to make sure that we convert these to text so what we have to do is we have to take that column and we change it to a text value and we take this column over here and we force that also to be a text value. Now we're safe to import the data. So we hit finish and the data is imported. So that looks okay so let's just tidy things up as we have to. So we'll embolden that row and make this slightly wider and we'll sort out the time format. using the custom format that we used in NA01 and then we're going to freeze the panes at that point there and I don't want, I'm not bothered about that particular column because I know it's SMB2 so let's get rid of that Now I'm going to face the same problem as I had with the SMB1 trace. Well that's the point we can see the ping there. So actually let's just we're going to dump everything prior to the ping. So we'll get rid of all of those including the ping and let's look for the other ping. So I'm going to look for the words echo. Okay it's right at the very end. I think I remember that, so let's just get rid of those rows there. And let's go back to the top. Now the other issue I'm going to have, you can see here immediately, is this issue where if I have a, um, a request or a response that spans multiple segments, I lose all of the information, the SMB information here that I need. And we can see here that we have two packets coming from the file server from port 445 going back towards the PC and uh, it's a response to a find command but the response actually spans two packets so I'm going to use the same trick as I used in my previous video which is I'm going to reverse the order of the packets and then I'm going to put some formulas in to copy the missing information into the correct cells 
but I do have one particular issue which is that in the past when I've been looking at SMB1 we don't tend to get uh, when we've got a sequence of packets that make up a whole SMB message let's look for a bigger one such as this sequence here I've got a retransmission there not to worry this sequence here we don't have any intervening other packets which was true with the um, uh, with SMB1 but if you look at this very next sequence what we've got is we've got packets that are coming from the file server going to the PC and actually we've got retransmissions there so that's not a good example let me move on so here's an example, a better one. So we have packets coming from the file server to the PC, but in the middle we've got a request going in the other direction. Now that will mess up my manipulation of um, data. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to um, sort it not only in reverse order, but I'm also going to have to sort it by direction, the direction in which the packet is going. Now I'm going to add a couple of other things into here. I'm going to start off by uh, adding something that tells me the client IP address. I, I will deal with direction. I'll deal with that in a minute. But let's just tackle this thing about client IP address. Quite easy to calculate because if my current packet is going to the file server, which this one actually is, then the, um, so if that's going to 445, then the source IP address must be the client, otherwise it would be the other packet, uh, sorry, the other column. So that gives me the client IP and I can copy that down. And that gives me, now in this case, everything was associated with this one client IP. But I wanted to show you this because uh, if you were studying lots of different client machines hitting the same server, you'd need to do this type of sorting activity using the client IP um, so that you could sort the sessions correctly. So I just want to show you this as part of this particular study. Similarly, I want the client TCP. port number and so again I just use a simple if statement if this packet is going towards the file server then that column there must be my client otherwise it's the destination port so that does that so again if you had multiple clients Especially if, say, you were looking at something like uh, a Zenapp server talking to a file server, you'd have um, multiple TCP port numbers. You can even have multiple TCP port numbers um, from one client accessing the same uh, multiple shares on one server. I think that's. I think you get uh, different TCP port numbers for that situation as well. So again, I'm introducing this so that you can use this to sort your data. Now the other thing I promised I'd do is look at the direction. So we introduce another column. I'm going to call it direction. And similar type of command, a formula. If this is going to the file server, then the direction of my packet is client. You can stick in any string here, but this is the one I use. Client to server. Otherwise, it must be going in the other direction, back to the client. Center that. Narrow it a little. And then just copy it down by double clicking on the square blob in the corner. There we have it. So that sorts out all of the direction. Um, I'm running out of time here so what I'm going to do I'm going to break here and then in the next video I will look at actually filling in 
these missing values. So I'll see you soon.